welcome. Um, as, as the slide says, this is um, truly welcoming you to a warm, um, inviting place. And hopefully we'll get some warm, inviting information going. And I just want to start by saying um, this workshop is being recorded. And uh, it's so few of us in here, but if for some reason um, you are not comfortable asking a question or for whatever reason you don't want to ask a question audibly, please feel free to use the chat. And Elizabeth Hammer will be acting as our voice of the chat today. Thank you, Elizabeth. And so um, we'll go ahead and get started. So this workshop, as soon as it lets me move on. Okay, there we go. Um, it's entitled The Benefits of Mentoring Tours. And I will tell you, this came to my mind in a very strange way. Again, this is a very challenging time for everybody. And the only thing I could think was in terms of teaching and mentoring, you're giving, giving, giving. You're just constantly giving. And in that situation, you can easily become depleted. And so what I wanted to do was talk about, okay, mentors are giving a lot. They're giving of themselves. How can I remind them of bits of what they're doing for them? And so that's where the idea of this came about. And when I started to do some research, um, as I said before, Erica, you came in, it took a turn that I didn't expect. So let's delve in. So today, we want to discuss the importance of benefiting mentors in our mentoring relationships or in their mentoring relationships. We want to discuss those theories or those just arguments that are out there in terms of what those benefits are. Um, and I want to present those theories that are actually supported by empirical evidence and discuss how that evidence supports those theories. And then finally, I want you to reflect on if and how your mentoring relationships actually benefit you. Sort of a reminder of something we may forget sometimes. So the nature of mentorship. I will tell you, so the citation for this cartoon is at the bottom of the slide. This slide has nothing to do with the study I'm going to discuss. However, it illustrated so simply and so perfectly the concept that I wanted to get across that I borrowed it. So I'm going to say something that may take some people by surprise, but this is a fact. Mentorship should never be an altruistic endeavor. And I know that sounds like it is so in antithesis to what mentoring should be, or I give to the mentee, I take care of them, I support them. But what happens if you take an altruistic approach is the mentee tends to gain at the expense of the mentor's resources. And you can think of those resources in terms of time, in terms of knowledge, and anything else that may come up in a mentoring relationship. And what ends up happening is the mentor's resources become exhausted and that mentor in some capacity becomes disabled. So I hope you buy into this concept that altruism, although it sounds great in terms of being a mentor, it is not the best approach if you are looking for the health of both the mentee and the mentor. So what should it look like? So I would argue that mentorship should be more of a magnanimous endeavor. Think of it as charitable. And what happens there is the mentor gives from resources that are renewable, but not essential for their well-being. And so that's the difference. You are giving of knowledge you already have, but that's something that is not only renewable, it, it's sustainable. Um, and in that situation, both the mentee and the mentor gain personal and career capital. Can you tell this little pictorial came from... Um, an economic source, because <laughs> that's what it's about uh, with the use of the word capital. Um, but the bottom line is the idea is the same, that instead of going into it with an altruistic mindset, 
um, you want to go into it with more of, mag of a magnanimous mindset. And that way, both the mentee and the mentor can benefit rather than one party benefiting and one being depleted. And I hear that so much in terms of you will hear certain faculty members talk about, you know, the line outside the door and I had to give up this time and the time came from this and I didn't have the time to do that. That's not helpful to anybody. So um, you really want to take on that magnanimous mindset. So now um, we are talking about one particular study by, I think this is Gauche and Rail. Um, and I'll, I'll get more into what the study was about, but the, the gist of it is in terms of benefits of mentoring, if you go out there and you just put it into a Google search, you don't even do much, what you're going to come out with is 99% about how mentoring benefits the mentee. And that, that usually is the focus because that's the way things go. Well, this particular duo um, wanted to look at how the mentor is benefited, but they wanted to go beyond sort of the, the self-reported, oh, it makes me feel good or it does that. They wanted to look at um, the, the entire thing from an empirical point of view. So one of the things they did in this paper was they looked at all of the arguments those non-empirically supported arguments that were out there about how mentoring benefits mentors. And so the first is um, it, in, in the relationship, the mentor can facilitate skills and competencies that actually lead to enhanced outcomes, career outcomes for the mentor. And what that means is as I teach my mentee this particular skill, I enhance my own skill in that area or, or as I walk in a leadership capacity, as I lead my mentee, then I become a better leader. So that's the idea behind this in terms of gaining those skills that you are demonstrating and um, modeling for the mentee. Uh, it can enhance a mentor's performance as the mentee provides constructive feedback. And that is just, as you go through your mentoring relationships, things happen. Sometimes they're positive and sometimes they're not so positive. But when you get, and I will use myself as an example, there a situation happened with a mentee and a mentor. And in that situation, I was not present for the situation. And so I decided to keep my distance as far as saying anything to the mentee. At a later time when we discussed the situation, the mentee said, I wished you would have come and asked me what happened. It was just as simple as that. Um, I, I just wanted you to hear my side and you didn't, you didn't say anything to me. And so that was an opportunity for me to learn and get a perspective on how they saw things different from the perspective that I had. Um, it can enhance the mentor's reputation. So if your mentee, you know, gains admission to this prestigious graduate program or they earn this particular fellowship or something like that, that enhances your reputation because you are known as their mentor and you help to facilitate their path there. Um, increased technical and managerial, again, those skills coming back to those skills as you model them and teach them to your mentee, um, those skills should be enhanced for you. And increase performance in terms of your job because now you have that pair of hands that's there working on the same thing that you are. So although you're teaching them and you're guiding them, they are also there and adding to the work that's going into it. So hopefully, the outcome in terms of the performance of that job will be enhanced because you do have that extra pair of hands. Um, and increase the mentor's sense of belonging and attachment to their organization. So there are some studies out there that shows that actually mentoring and guiding students in that organization actually increases the mentor's loyalty and affinity for um, the particular organization. Oops. 
sorry. And um, finally, gain a purpose in finding an outlet for passing on their knowledge and wisdom. So now you have a protege. So now you have this person who you have accumulated this body of knowledge throughout your career, and now you have someone you're invested into passing that knowledge on to. And it gives you a sense of purpose in terms of this is my role in helping this person move along on this path. So those are just a few of the ideas that are out there in terms of, you know, how mentoring, if a mentor mentors, they can be benefited. Um, the problem is, how do you measure these things? How do you uh, demonstrate this empirically? So in this paper, one of the things, and this is going to be important to understanding what they did, one of the things they looked at in terms of um, benefits is career outcomes. Um, so they describe two types of career outcomes. One objective, one type is the objective. And those are things like your salary, how you're compensated for your job, um, promotions, titles that you receive, and also leadership positions that you may take. So these are actually tangible things that you can point to in terms of how your career moves. The second type is subjective. And <clears throat> those are things like job satisfaction, things that are a little hard to measure outside of asking someone how they feel, career satisfaction, <clears throat> and loyalty um, and commitment to the organization. So once again, we are looking at, in terms of career outcomes, we're looking at both objective outcomes as well as subjective outcomes. So in this particular study, um, the authors did what they call a meta-analysis. And let me do a disclaimer right now. This is a, <clears throat> a study that relies heavily on some very complicated statistical analyses, which I have about zero knowledge of. So I want to be clear that um, I can understand the conclusions they come to. But if you have any questions about the statistical analyses and these kinds of tests and those kinds of tests, um, I will do my best to get you to somebody like Carol Diaz or someone who can actually answer those questions because it is not me. So with that being said, they conducted a meta-analysis that focused on three facets of the mentoring role. And those are career support. And I, I want to be clear because sometimes it can be difficult following whether they're talking about the mentee or the mentor. So what they are looking at is the mentor actually mentoring a mentee in the areas of career support for the mentee, psychosocial support for the mentee, and role modeling for the mentee. But they are looking at that in terms of how those activities benefit the mentor. Everybody clear on that? Okay. So when they conducted a literature search to find the appropriate studies, they ended up with 13 published studies, four dissertations, and one unpublished study. So those, what, 17, 18 items were what this entire meta-analysis is based upon. So when they looked at this, what did they find? So let's say first look at, they had six different theories um, in terms of what they would find as they conducted this meta-analysis. The first is individuals who have mentored will report greater subjective career outcomes than individuals who have not mentored. So this is just a general across the board those who have been mentors will have, again, those subjective ones of, remember, greater career satisfaction, greater job satisfaction, more loyalty to the institution. So people who have mentored will just have better of those subjective outcomes than individuals who have not. So how did that turn out after the analysis, the complicated one I just spoke about? So red equals that, um, the hypothesis 
is unsupported by the statistical analysis. So that's the little red face here, this guy. The yellow face is that the hypothesis is fully supported by the meta-analysis. And then the neutral face is um, the hypothesis is partially supported by the meta-analysis. And so when all was said and done, and I'm going to read this because I think it's very important for hypothesis one, the result indicated that mentors were more satisfied with their job and more committed to their organization for turnover intent that is intent to leave the organization. The findings also suggested that mentors were less likely to turn over. The reason it's only partially supported, and again, it goes back to the statistical analysis that is not my bailiwick. It is because the 95% confidence interval associated with the mean included zero. And I'm sure some people in this room understand that. So because the zero is included in this, what they had, then it is only partially supported. But again- You're doing, the, you're doing fine, Tira. <laughs> I appreciate that because if anybody in here has any knowledge of statistics, and I happen to know at least a couple of people who do, um, you'll realize that I don't. So, Okay, so the second hypothesis was um, the provision of career mentoring support will be positive related to subjective career outcomes. So now they're getting a little more granular. They're looking specifically, remember the three mentor roles that we talked about were career support, psychosocial support, and what was the third one? Career, psychosocial, and got to go back. Role modeling, that was the third. And so now hypothesis two is relating career mentoring support specifically to the subjective career outcomes for the mentor. And anybody want to take a guess on how that turned out? Yes. <laughs> I didn't wait the requisite how many seconds before I answered? Um, Seven. <laughs> so this, again, um, is only partially supported. Um, the results indicated that providing career mentoring support is related to higher performance at work and higher perceived career success for mentors. Moreover, the results suggested that mentors were more satisfied, committed to the organization, and less likely intending to turn over. But the situation is um, the same where that 95% confidence in the interval included a zero, so it is only partially supported. The third hypothesis, the provision of psychosocial mentoring be positively related to subjective career outcomes. So now we're looking at another aspect of mentoring the psychosocial support and relating it directly to the subjective career outcomes. And surprisingly, another partially supported. Um, the results indicated that providing psychosocial mentoring support is related to higher job satisfaction, higher organizational commitment, and higher perceived career success for mentors. The results also suggested providing psychosocial was associated with greater job performance and less turnover. And again, you still have that confidence interval including zero situation. But I just wanna remind you as we go through these, although statistically these hypotheses are only partially supported, remember these are across unrelated studies. Um, many unrelated studies and the fact that you are seeing um, consistent partial support of these kinds of things um, tells me that you can see these benefits in terms of mentoring, particularly with the, with the right mindset as you approach your mentoring. Any questions so far? All right. So let's look at the fourth hypothesis. The provision of role modeling mentoring support will be positive related, positively related to subjective career outcomes. And I want to ask this again and wait, wait the requisite seven seconds. Anybody want to take a guess at what, how this one might come out? Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that was the seven seconds. Elizabeth gave me a thumbs up and she was actually correct that this one was fully supported by the statistical analysis. So when mentors engage in role modeling, that is engaging in the behavior that they want their mentees to emulate, it was a positive correlation to their subjective career outcomes. Again, job satisfaction, career satisfaction, as well as um, loyalty or commitment to the institution. That's why we in CAT always look to model the behavior we want, <laughs> we want to see. Because I really do think this is across the board. This is not in ju just in this context. I think when you model behavior, um, you, you get better outcomes than when you just tell people that they should do something. Hypothesis five says the provision of psychosocial and role modeling mental support together will have a stronger relationship with subjective career outcomes for mentors than the provision of career support mentoring. So again, they took the two aspects of the psychosocial support and the role modeling and said that those will have a stronger relationship to the subjective career outcomes for the mentor than, um, than just the career support mentoring. And once again, we have a partially supported. And for that one, this was a very complicated one. In this particular hypothesis, they ended up, um, they got a skewed result. And when they took out one particular study, they ended up with a, a very different result. And so again, the outcome came out to be partially supported. But um, when they removed a really big study from the analysis, um, well, both before and after they removed the study, it was still partially supported. But it was st more strongly supported when that larger study was removed from the analysis. And finally, hypothesis six, the mentor's perceptions of quality of the mentoring relationship will be positively related to the mentor's subjective career outcomes. So this one also ended up with being fully supported. So what the mentor perceives to be the quality of the relationship, again, is positively correlated with their subjective outcomes. Again, they are have higher career job satisfaction and more loyalty to the institution. So none of this is a surprise to me, um, this approach, because again, when I started doing the literature search, I did not expect to find this kind of study. And when I did find it, I'm like, okay, this is a little more quantitative than I thought I would ever find because I'm used to sort of, again, how did you feel about, or did you feel this? So I'm interested more in, in opinions about how one feels. Um, but the outcomes were not a surprise to me simply because of the nature of mentoring. Mentoring is that kind of thing and, and I mean true mentoring, not just calling something mentoring, but it is that kind of thing that you either invest in or you don't. And when somebody invests in a situation like that, the benefits or what happens with them is so interrelated to what happens with the mentee that these partial or full correlations are not a surprise to me. So with that being said, um, I have, I hope that we have a very robust discussion about number one, are your mentoring relationships altruistic or magnanimous? And again, please don't feel obligated to speak up. I hope everybody will speak up. Would like to hear um, if you honestly believe that the mentoring relationships you're involved in are altruistic, magnanimous, or some combination of the two, or something else altogether. 
Well, uh, Tier, before we do that, we have a, a question in the chat, and it's mine, and I didn't even type it in there yet. <laughs> I wonder if you would expand a little bit. I was going to ask you this when you're doing that slide. I wonder if you'd expand a little bit more about what you mean by magnanimous. I, I, the other two bullet points I kind of got, you know, okay, um, in, in that, you know, you're, it's uh, sustainable resources and resources that, you, you know, are replenishing instead of depleting, but just the use of that word in contrast to altruistic, I wonder if you could expand a bit. Absolutely. So I would like to say this is a word of my choosing because when I was reading the literature, I came across the word charitable. And it's not that that word is inappropriate. I just didn't like it because of its connotation. So I chose the word magnanimous. But what I mean in relation to, think about charitable giving, for example. It goes back to what I was saying about resources and something coming from excess as opposed to, um, you know, essential resources. When you give to charity, um, typically you are giving from something that you have excess of, that... Um, you know, you really have it in your heart for St. Jude. You love St. Jude, but you just don't have the money to give right now. So you're like, when I get the money, I'm going to donate to St. Jude. And that very next month, you find you have an extra $20. And you're like, okay, this is the time. I've, I've taken care of all of my needs. Let me go ahead and give to St. Jude. And so that is what I mean when I say magnanimous. I mean that you give. You absolutely give, but you give from a place and from a point where you have it to give as opposed to depleting. Um, and I go back to time because I think that's one of the things I hear is, is one of the most uh, used resources. Um, instead of pulling time that you don't have or from something that is essential to what you need to do. You are, you have put yourself in a situation where, okay, I now have the time to do this. And so I want to give this time in this way to my mentee. Does that okay. clear it up? It sure does. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. So uh, my monumental thank you. I appreciate y'all being here. I appreciate these conversations. Um, I think they're important, and as always, I would like to remind you that, first of all, you will receive a survey and evaluation via email very shortly after this workshop is over. Take a few minutes to tell us how you feel, what you think. Um, your feedback is not only appreciated, but it is much needed for us to to do better and to give you what you need. So with that being said, if there's nothing else, thank you.